What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Extended ROM on this device. And this is not the Pixel Experience ROM, this is a Pixel Extended, a different kind of ROM. And this is based on Android 10 of course still, not a Android 11 build yet but I have been using it for a long time now so I thought it's time to do the review. And here I have 22nd September 2020 build of this Pixel Extended official ROM. And you can see the extended version says as 1.0 and pixel extended logo up there on top of course. The security patch is latest of September 5th, 2020 and we have the stop kernel as per G kernel. Now I know I will show the normal stuff later on but let me tell you this is a, a complete review so do watch the full video if you want to get the in-depth thing. I know that like ends up resulting a longer video but I cannot do it without getting boring or something. I don't know and here at the stock launcher let me actually show you first this is the pixel launcher by default we get over here as you can see pixel launcher and this of course has very less customization no double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen to the left of the home screen we do have google now discover page and swiping down anywhere on the home screen gets you to the notification panel and swiping up gets you to the app drawer of course and you can disable the suggestions and the widgets on the home screen are working fine and this is a ios kind of wallpaper which i'm using and this is looking very cool. Now talking about the quick settings panel, here is how it looks like again. And here I have added a couple of toggles. We do get a recording screen option. And let me tell you, you can add multiple toggles over here. As you can see, there are more options if you scroll down and you get plethora of options from here. If you're noticing, these are the app kind of based options. And then we get the normal options like ambient display, caffeine mode, volume panel, etc. And here we do have this recording screen option, but I could not find the FPS info option. Sadly, you can disable heads up if you want to, of course, always on display, you can disable that. And the screen of FOD does work. I have tested that. And here we have like more things like hotspot and stuff. And this recording screen option is not something like the oxygenous kind of screen recorder. It just records the system audio and stuff. And I think it also records the mics audio. So that's good. And here the screen recording is actually working fine. You should not be having any problems with the default screen recorder here. Now talking about flashing this ROM, you can watch this particular video if you're coming from MIUI. Make sure to flash the latest 12.0.3 vendor. If your device is an Indian device, you need the latest 12.0.3 Rafael in, in global vendor to flash this ROM. So from Orange Fox Recovery, if you're coming from a different ROM, wipe cache Talvik system data and vendor as well if you want to, then you can just flash the latest 12.0.3 vendor, then flash this ROM file and flash fcrypt disabled if your storage is decrypted, then you can just reboot. And you do not need to flash any gapps here because the gapps is included in the ROM file itself. Now why I like this ROM, you may ask, well, the stock camera here is the ANX camera. That is one thing to like about this ROM. This is the latest like MIUI 12's ANX camera and it also has this yellowish kind of things. And as you can see, there is the vlog mode and stuff, the portrait mode does work as you can see let me actually take a portrait picture so here i just took a portrait picture and as you can see if you just noticed the app lock is there and portrait mode pictures and stuff is there i will show you the app lock later on like the stuff of the app lock and here as you can see in the video mode let me show you you get up to 1080p 30 fps option for the front camera and if you switch to the back camera here you get up to 4k 60 fps with all the lenses of course so that is not a problem okay so that you will find in here i guess as you can see we do have slow motion option and the slow motion does go up to 960 fps in 1080p so that is not an issue either the stock camera is working great flawlessly no issues with the stock anx camera or MIUI camera. I've also installed Google Camera 7. This is working totally fine. And with Nightset and stuff, this also works. And if you want to install this Google Camera, you can click on the card right there. Now, in the settings panel, if I go into the system here, you do have the system updater from where you can check for updates for newer update. And the developer's name is Aryan Gupta, and he did develop a really amazing ROM here. And I have never got a chance to get disappointed. Here in the device customizations, we have traffic indicators or the network traffic monitor. You can use this. I use a separate app for this so I have been using that that is working fine here too and inside system icons we have the headset Bluetooth etc icons NFC and stuff the Indian Redmi K20 Pro simply does not have NFC so that is not a thing that I am interested about and here Valti logo and stuff is there but you cannot change the Valti icon here we have clock positions so seconds AM PM style battery status style you can change it to icon portrait circle and text no big dotted circle or stuff like those 
here we have battery percentage and you can change the battery percentage next to the icon or inside the icon or you can hide the percentage if you want to then we have this brightness control so you can slide a finger on the status bar just like this to control the brightness of the screen this is a really handy feature i use it on a daily basis and i can't live without this feature and i feel this is a really important feature here we have quick pull down then vibrate on toggle touch rows and column number customization then blur behind quick settings is there then we have this column or like quick settings toggle style i mean flip or rotate animation you can change those now let me go back to the buttons layout and here we have the system navigations and from here i have been using this android tense gesture of course one thing that i do not like is you cannot change this navigation bar size of or something you cannot even change the thickness of it so yeah that's how it is but you can hide the navigation bar pill if you want to two and three button navigation is there if you are using some old school navigation type and advanced reboot is there you can have that and let me actually show you from here if i tap restart right now i can directly reboot to recover your fast boot so that is a really great thing and inside this power menu we do have screenshot and stuff then we have end call long press power button toggle torch is there and we have this control playback and stuff now let me go to the gestures here you do have this swipe or screenshot and let me actually show you this is the asus kind of long screenshot edit share delete option so yeah you do get all the options and there you have all the system navigations again let me go back the default keyboard is of course gboard as this has g apps in the rom file itself and here we have the front camera sound effects you can disable the sound effects if you want to and also you can disable the camera led if you want to now inside the security we find this like app locker and let me actually show you by going into it this is the most interesting thing that about this app locker we do have this hide notification content while app is locked on the latest evolution x the app lock is kind of weird i feel i don't know that's my feeling maybe but here the app lock is just perfect in my opinion you know why because let me just show you like i have locked this telegram app and you can also lock any particular app from like your app selection kind of thing on from the app locker and from here i have locked the telegram app and right now if i like unlock the app as you can see it opens and right now if i want to see the contents of it from the recent panel it just doesn't show as you can see it shows white and right now if i open it as soon as i like closed it or like went to home if i open it from there it will open but if i try it 15 seconds later or there is something 10 to 15 seconds delay if i open it 10 to 15 seconds later it will ask me for that fingerprint again let me actually open more apps from here so that i can show you later on as you can see i'm opening some of the apps that i see over here play store youtube google home instagram now this is just going to be the like app opening of speeds and stuff as you can see all the apps do stay in memory no issues with the like memory management over here i have never faced any issues with the memory management switching between apps is pretty fine right now if i try to open the telegram app because it's been a long time as you can see it still asks me for the fingerprint and if i try to go to the recent panel from here as you can see i simply cannot see the contents of telegram if i tap here i have to enter the fingerprint or like assign the fingerprint or pin so this is a very interesting feature in my opinion and the app lock is just working perfectly good over here even with like chat heads or overlays the app lock works 100 percent of the time so i have no issues with the app locker here and this is just a perfect app locker in a custom rom that i found mostly now let me quickly show you the fingerprint scanner speed here like the normal lock screen fingerprint scanner here from the always on display let me put the fingerprint and as you can see it unlocks let's do it with the left hand thumb from the always on display and it still unlocks again and from the lock screen and again unlocks just notice the like speed of the fingerprint scanner it is very very fast and very reliable fingerprint scanner here but let me tell you if i turn on night light that like does a hit on the fingerprint scanner and sometimes i have seen it not unlocking but right now as you can see it is unlocking fine but mostly from the lock screen let me try okay so did you just notice that it takes a little bit more time to unlock when like you are on the lock screen with the night light turned on let me do it again okay so right now it did fine i don't know for some reason like when i was trying previously with the night light it was going bonkers for some reason right now it's not happening so that's good actually now in the security let me actually go here we do have this face unlock too so let me assign my face over here so that's almost done 
So right now, let me just double tap on the status bar. Right now, I'll just double tap to wake. And here, if I swipe up, then it pops out the front camera and it unlocks. Let me do it again. So here you have the face unlock speed and these are the settings for the face unlock and as you can see there is no option to like always unlock with the face like you don't have to swipe up from the lock screen that option is not there. So it is actually good it won't like pop out the front camera or something accidentally I guess. Here we have the sound settings and this is how it looks like. By the way the volume panel looks like this here and you can expand the volume panel just like this as you can see and it gives you a haptic feedback whenever you scroll through it. And there is the charging sound, charging vibration, touch sound, etc. Disabling option. Then we also have this Mi Audio Dirac. And I gotta say, with this Youth Edition I have set, and with this, with my Mi Dual Driver headphones and the Redmi earphones, the sound output via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well is like really amazing. I did not have any problems with the sound quality on this ROM. The sound quality here is great, no problems. Vibrate for calls and stuff is there. Live caption is of course there. Here as you can see, we do have the Wi-Fi calling. So I just enabled that. Right now, let me just place a call so that I can show you the stock dialer here. And as you can see, this is how the in-call UI looks like, like by default. And Wi-Fi call it says over here. And as you can see, there is no call recording option, at least by default. So that is one bummer in my opinion, but you can do a video call or something. You can hold mute, put it to speaker or something like that. So yeah, this is a normal pixel dialer and Wi-Fi calling and Vault calling both are working fine here. That's what I'm trying to say here. Now going into the display settings, here is how it looks like and everywhere you find these animations in the settings and dark theme and stuff is of course working fine. Night light, auto brightness, or RP brightness is there and this like color calibration, you can change it to like anything. As you can see, you can control the RGB and hue saturation intensity and contrast of the screen. Let me go back, we have the styles and wallpapers and over here you can customize a theme as you can see. Let me actually show you. As you can see there are plethora of fonts over here so no issues with these fonts and there are plethora of accent colors to choose from as you can see. A lot of accent colors are there so you can choose from these. You can just like set a custom theme with these accent colors and you can apply that. And clocks, we have some preset clocks over here for the lock screen. And as you can see, there are like multiple options you can choose from. And inside wallpapers, we do have this come alive section from where you can like download or apply the default wallpapers, the default live wallpapers. And inside living universe, we have these many options. Of course, you can download them if you want to. And there is also like the pixel wallpapers that you get normally. We have the screen timeout there and we have rotation settings and inside rotation settings we have 180 degree rotation and stuff. Display size and width or DPI customization is there. Inside lock screen we have the always on display disabling option. There is also this recognizing effect animation. So you can actually like change the animations of these things like the finger width scanner of course. And here let me actually set it to Aurora like lock the device and as you can see. The Aurora animation did work fine. So you have the option to change the like lock screen bit scanner, but it is kind of hidden in this display lock screen settings. So you have to go to the display, then lock screen settings, then you can change these to these mini animations of the bit scanner. Let me go back. We have the double tap to wake and double tap to sleep. Both are working great. And wake up on plug, you can disable that. Pocket detection mode is there. And we have this anti-flicker or DC dimming mode that should work fine too. And we have the normal accent color changing option from here. So if you want to change the accent color from here itself, you do not have to go to the themes or something. You can just do it from here. So that is one really interesting thing. Then we have the primary color. You can change it to like anything else like ocean blue or like dark blue, etc. Then we have bliss clear and stuff. Of course, if you use dark theme, the background is just gonna go like pitch black, of course. And here we have the icon shape status bar icon. You can change that. Switch style, you can change that. These are the toggle styles. So if I change it to MD2, just notice here. Okay, right now it changed as you can see. The toggles looks a little bit different. Let me actually put the device color back to default or the accent color, I mean. Let me go back. We have the battery settings here. We have like the battery temperature and stuff, but it does not show the battery cycles. That is kind of disappointing for me, but yeah, I'm fine with it. The 18 watt fast charging over here is actually working fine, no issues and you can get definitely 7 to 8 hours of screen on time without any issues on this ROM. Like daily driving with a like full charge on this ROM is pretty fine. It definitely will last you for a whole working day without any issues. And of course we do have thermal profiles and stuff, then battery saver, 
aggressive battery, smart charging, etc. options are definitely there. And inside apps and notifications, this is how it looks like. Of course, you can like change the notifications per app. No issues with that. And in terms of daily driving performance, I have had no issues with the ROM itself. And in terms of daily driving, the performance has been really great for me. And if you want to see the Android 2 and Geekbench score, here are the scores of this ROM. And the DRM info shows as level 1 here. So that means you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues. And you can use Google Pay or any other banking apps right out of the box because safety net is totally working fine and it passes the safety net test. I know I am doing this video pretty late about this Pixel Extended ROM but I have been using thoroughly this ROM for about more than a week now and I have been getting a really great experience with this ROM and I have never faced any issues with this particular Pixel Extended build of the 22nd September 2020. This ROM is just great. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this ROM guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet and share this video with your friends if you feel like. And thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.